Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom this world eagerly calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. And peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, the 144,000. I'm your brother Yeshaya, and I pray, Lord willing, that this lesson is edifying through the Spirit. All right, um, this was sparked um, through the Spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. And uh, we were at camp this past Sunday, and we had a, uh, a Christian, a Yeshua Christian come up. And basically, uh, afterwards, we, we found out that the brother was scoffing at the other brother's camp. But um, he, when he came up to us, he said, the first thing he did, uh, he might have said hello, I'm not sure. But he said, hey, man, can I have a water? And I said, do you believe in God? And and I, I ended up saying, I, I get it that I answered a question with a question. I'll be big on stuff like that, too. So then I said, I said, okay, let me change my answer. Possibly. So I answered him and I said, do you believe in God? After that, he started getting proud. He started, I don't know, he just got this spirit on him. Like, you know what I mean? He started getting proud and acting like we're not good enough because I didn't give him any water. So then we brought our scriptures on as he was walking away about giving not to a, a, a give to a godly man. You know, how it was uh, a problem to beg. It was better to die than to beg. You know, and things like that. But he could have just been trying to quote unquote test our spirits to see if we were good natured by giving them something. But giving somebody literal cold water does not make you a servant of your help. It does not make you a gentle or a kind person. You see, and that's the problem with the people in this society. They think just giving water away or giving people ham sandwiches is going to make you righteous in the eyes of the Lord. But he don't understand that he offended us more so than him. He came back about five minutes later and he set down three waters in front of us, seeing that we had a cooler. So his statement was basically saying that I'm better than y'all because I'm willing to give y'all water and y'all didn't give me any. He didn't say that, but that's what he meant through the spirit. You can tell it was implied, you know, and we end up throwing the water away and I'm not even big on uh i don't like wasting uh stuff like that especially water okay but you never know what we in the midst of our enemies these people can he can take a needle and poison that shit put something in it even though at the end of the day you know the lord says we gonna drink poison and we gonna it's not gonna harm us you see what i'm saying i fact, that is a good scripture too i like that scripture um i always quote it wrong too because i say uh, drink poison, but I don't think it literally says the word poison. I always kind of get it confused. Let me see here if I can find it. Um, well, this is one of them. Yeah, this is uh, Luke 10 and verse 19. It says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Right? So, uh, uh, he, he, the Lord said nothing by any means is going to hurt us. You see, so at the end of the day, we, we don't have to necessarily be worried about that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm trying to see if I can find the exact one before I start getting my other scripture. Shall drink poison. KJV. Let me see if I can find it. Well, I guess that's, that is the kind of one. It's one in Mark 16. Um, oh, that's it. Yep. Mark 16, 18. It says they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You see, so if they drink any deadly thing. So even, you know, we did drink the water, you know, and once you brought us some damn Dasani, which is fucking Coca-Cola, that shit do that when you open the top. <laughs> but, uh, you know. And, and it's, if this was Jacob's trouble, you know, do give you water. Hey, go ahead, take it, pray over it. The Lord going to bless it, you know. But at the end of the day, we right now, it's like, man, we don't need that shit. You know, I didn't even feel comfortable giving it away to somebody homeless. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, our, we are our enemy. We surround by our enemies and they want to do anything to us. OK. Um. So I wanted to talk about that because I want to talk about 
the value of water, okay? Because the times that we're living in, people are so reckless, people are so careless, people don't care about uh, doing things through the Spirit. People are, you know, the Scriptures say that they sh their victuals shall be so good, cheap upon earth, that they shall think themselves in good case. So uh, people treat water carelessly. And I mean, to some extent, I guess I do too. Not like truly careless, but I mean in the sense of I'll run my shower, uh, you know, five minutes before I get in just so it can warm up. Um, you know, I'll when I brush my teeth, sometimes I let the sink run. You know what I mean? Things like that. So it's like you, you kind of treat it carelessly because it's comfortable and it's, it's readily available for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so little aspects like that is what I mean by we waste water. Um, but when I have like my drinking water, typically I don't I don't waste it. Even if I have a bottle that I haven't finished, unless it's like dregs, I might not drink the dregs, like the very bottom. But if I got a little water, I'll just, even though I'm like cleaning up, I got a couple water bottles around, I'll drink the rest and then throw the water away. You know, but people don't realize that's going to be one of the largest commodities in Jacob's trouble. Water is going to be more valuable than gold will be because... That is going to be life or death situations once martial law and Jacob's trouble occurs, you know. Um, and I'm going to get it from a spiritual angle, too, as well. But um, I want to read this real quick. Exodus 17 and 3, it says, and the people thirsted there for water. And who's those people talking about? I'm talking about the Israelites when they were in the wilderness. It says, and the people murmured against Moses and said, wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children? And our cattle with thirst. So the people were immensely thirsty. And so if you know this story, you know that Moses, this is where this is really Moses was not allowed to see the promised land because he smote the rock at Horeb and he, he Merib, uh, or Horeb. Um, but it said um, he didn't give glory to the Lord because he was so angry with these people. So he smote the rock in his anger, but water came out of it. Water came forth. And so you know, the Lord always going to provide for his His elect, man, you know. Um, but this time he was providing for the whole nation. But they were saying, did you bring us all this way just for us to die of thirst? So how much more these people when the Lord is not going to care? Excuse me. Well, the Lord is just not going to care about how thirsty people are. He's not going to care if the two thirds are thirsty. He's not going to care if the heathen are thirsty. Right, but water is gonna be, you know, and I always use that story from the book of Eli when uh uh Denzel, his name was Eli in the movie, when Denzel walked into the bar and he act the he, the the guy at the bar, he asked him what did he want, and then he told him, I'll take some water. And then he said, Oh, you want the good stuff. So then he had to trade like leather gloves, a scarf, you know, different things like that in order to get only a half like uh he had like a flask like a larger flask only to get a half full you see what i'm saying so that's how dire it is going to be able to get access to water access to food but water is going to be water is going to be more valuable than food will be you know and people not going to want to drink goddamn uh soda pop we call it pop up north but they call it soda down here in the south but people not going to want to drink no damn Coca-Cola. People not going to want to drink a Fanta. You will if there's nothing around you. You're like, oh, I found a Fanta. Yeah, you'll drink it. But if you, if you present the finest uh, 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 alcohol, let's say Louis 13, right? Louis 13 costs thousands of dollars. Let's say somebody say, hey, you want Louis 13 or you want this bottle of uh, uh, Fiji water? In that time, people gonna take that Fiji, third Fiji. You know, they might. Only reason they take the Louis Thirteen is if they got a connection, they can sell that so they can get water. But if they got a choice and they've been out here running around, been like pilgrims, and they they got a choice and they out here thirsty, they gonna take that water because that you know that liquor is not gonna do nothing but dehydrate you. You unless you're using it for bartering purposes, it's not gonna benefit you. And people are gonna want water more. Okay. Um, Nehemiah 9 and 15 and gave us them bread from heaven for their hunger right that was the manna 
and brought us for the water for them out of the rock for their thirst. And uh, water isn't supposed to come out of rock and, and food isn't supposed to fall from heaven. This is how you know the, the, the God of the heavens is dealing with the Israelites. Well, now he's dealing with the elect of the Israelites. He only loves the nation of Israel and promised them that they promised them that they should go into the possess the land which thou hast sworn to give them. So the Lord was doing miraculous things using his men. Okay. Verse 20, thou gavest also the good spirit to instruct them and what the hell is not thy manner from thy mouth and gavest them water for their thirst. So the Lord was given water to the believer, well, to his nation, but this time he's going to be giving it to the believer. So we're going to have water, right? We always talk about Isaiah 65, where it says, my servant shall eat, but it also says, my servant shall drink and they shall be thirsty. That's what it says, man. You know, but in the spiritual sense, we already have the water, right? The Lord says, he that uh, basically believeth on me, out of his belly shall, shall flow rivers of living water, right? Psalm 63 and 1 says, a psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Oh, Yahweh, thou art my power. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. See, our, 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 his, his, uh, his soul and his flesh was thirsting for water, but your soul has to thirst for Yahweh Bashim Yahshua. That's the only way you're going to be given, uh, 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 given that quenching, you know, that, uh, that, and I'm not talking about quenching of the spirit. I'm talking about that you're quenched when you're, uh, uh, when you have enough, when the, when the water is satisfying to you, when you're no longer deep right now, we're living in a world of people that are dehydrated, man. But the people that are spiritually dehydrated. So since the Lord, they're not, they're not, their souls aren't thirsting after him. He's going to make their flesh be completely thirsty in these times to come, man. All right. Um, Isaiah 41 and 17, when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord will hear them. I, the power of Israel will not forsake them. So the poor and needy right now is the elect. He's talking about the those are the ones who's seeking water, right? We're seeking the water from the Most High. We're the, 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 the yeah. It's cool if you get a nicer bottle of water. You know, sometimes the brother be getting this, the Saratoga glass waters and Essentia and you know all of that kind of stuff. But it's like the the highest water is going to be the Word of the Lord, right? It's going to be the Word of the Lord. That's that's the highest water you can have. You can be dehydrated just like King David was. But the Lord is going to come through and he's going to give you the water for your spirit. And through the water from your spirit, you're going to receive the water in the flesh because that's the, the water in the spirit is what you really need. And that's really faith. The water in the spirit is really faith. OK. Let me see. Uh, I can skip that one. This is uh, Isaiah 55 and one. It says, ho, everyone that thirsteth. Come ye to the waters. And what is the waters? The truth. The doctrine that's set up through the spirit and power. Yahweh Bashem Yashai, through the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, right? The, the, the scriptures, the understanding of the scriptures. Come ye to the waters, to the truth, right? Hey, but what they say about a horse? They say, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink, right? But if you, at the end of the day, if you thirsty, you're going to drink of that water, that pure fountain, okay? It says, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, Come ye buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without wine, I mean, excuse me, without money and without price. So this is going to be, you, you can now get the truth and you get the best water there is without paying for it. All right. You, you know, you're not paying money for it. Let me say that, you know, because in a way we, we do pay, right? We pay in uh, uh, using our time, we pay in using our love and our charity our uh, alms, you know, excuse me, we pay with alms, we pay uh, with our time, but this is a small, those things are small sacrifices, right? We pay efforts, commitment, dedication, reliability, dependability, things for the church, right? Prayers, all of those things, but those things ultimately benefit us, right? That's the, that's the irony of all of that, right? The more you give into the Lord, the more he's going to give to you. But that ain't the reason you're supposed to serve him. But ultimately, it might not seem like it at the time. 
But the Lord says, we going to, I shall not hear, ear, I shall not see, ear shall not hear the things he has prepared for us. So it's like, even though you're giving up things, hey man, it's a light affliction. It's nothing compared to the things he's going to do for us. Okay. This is John 4 and 13. Yahweh shall answer and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. You see that? So the people that are drinking regular water, we're going to thirst again. People that drinking the doctrines of the world, the, the false doctrines of the world, you're going to thirst again. Verse 14 says, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Right? So does this mean just because you know the truth that you're never going to be thirsty again? No, but you're not going to be spiritually thirsty. Now, I meant to look, I was always like a person searching for knowledge, searching for truth. But the Lord, when, the, when I found out about the truth, I knew that this was the pure water. I knew that I didn't have to thirst anymore. I knew that I could only just excel in the education of the truth under the apostles. That's I, that I don't have to go and search out uh, is, is, is Islam the truth. I don't have to go out and search out is Christianity the truth. It's like now I know that this is the one that quenches my thirst and this. So that's what he means. We shall never thirst again. We don't got to go and look out for folly no more because we know that this is the purest fountain of water that we've ever seen, that we've ever tasted. You know, when you taste the best, water, you know, difference in water. When you taste the best water you've ever had, you're like, man, that water was different. You see what I'm saying? But it says, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. OK, so the well, this well that he's given us is springing up in us as everlasting life, man. You know, the Lord is sustaining us and keeping us through all of this. Revelation 21 and 6 says, and he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. You see that? So the Lord says, come. Right. It says uh, uh, he that is a thirst come. And he said, you can drink the water of life freely, which is the understanding of these scriptures. If you really sincere, you're about him and you're part of the Lord's elect. Lord willing, we be a part of the number. He's going to allow you to drink. All right. Second Ezra 1 and 20. It says, when you were thirsty, did I not cleave the rock and the waters flowed out to your fill? So, I mean, you got it. The Lord gave you as much water as you as, as Jake wanted back then. The quail came. He said they ate quail till it was coming out of their nose. It says, for the heat, I covered you with the leaves of the trees. So the Lord gave us food. The Lord gave us water. The Lord provided trees so we wouldn't be hot. Right. Breeze came through. You see what I'm saying? So this is the, the power of heaven and earth. And look at the things he was doing for, for us, man. All right. Uh, Ecclesiastes 15, 51 and 24. Wherefore are ye slow? And what say ye to these things? Seeing your souls are very thirsty. You see, your soul got to be thirsty and on fire for the Lord first and foremost. But nonetheless, it was our, our, your soul also can be your flesh being thirsty. All right. And I just got a couple more precepts. This is uh, the book of Judith, the eighth chapter, something that happened in history. Judith eight and I'm going to read verse nine first. It says, now, when she heard the evil words of the people against the governor, that they fainted for lack of water, for Judith had heard all the words that Ozias had spoke unto them, and they had sworn to deliver the city unto the Assyrians after five days. You see, and so basically they weren't allowed to get any water. OK, so in the time of Judah, there was a, you know, ultimately a drought because they were taking water from them and, and guaranteed this is a big deal. Hence, Judith ended up taking the head of Holofernes to change the pace of what was going on with our people. And this was through the spirit and power of Yahweh But Judith 8 and verse 29, for this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested, but from the beginning of thy days, all the people have known thy understanding because the disposition of thine heart is good. But the people were very thirsty and compelled us to do unto them as we have spoken and to bring an oath upon ourselves, which we will not break. Therefore, now pray for us because thou art a godly woman and the Lord will send us rain to fill our cisterns and we shall faint no more. OK, so basically that's when the Lord put the spirit on her to set up, to put on all her jewelry. And, you know, uh, 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 put on our jewelry and to go and sed ultimately seduce a loaf and without getting down with him and took his head off. And this changed the status quo. So they were able to get water. But that's how, you know, it not having water can be a very bad and desperate situation. But having faith in the Lord, 
right, to give you rain so that you won't fade no more and be able to have those things, people are going to have to have faith. And majority of our people don't have that anymore, but the elect got it, man. So water is going to be a high valued commodity in these last time. Faith is going to be even a higher valued commodity in the word of the Lord. So, man, brothers, what we got to do is keep doing what we're doing. The Lord going to give us food and water and we shall never thirst again. So I pray, Lord willing, that this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, the honor, and the glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone to rule well, and peace, mercy to the elect. Until next time, Shalom.